let's look at the best films from 2021. These are my top 10 favorite films of 2021. Let me know your favorites down below in the comments. And let's just jump into this thing. Starting with some honorable mentions, we got West Side Story by Steven Spielberg, a reimagining of a classic, and this movie is phenomenal. It's beautiful, and I really enjoyed it. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, a fun, fresh, innovative, new Marvel film that introduces a new MCU hero that we can all root behind. Don't Look Up. No Time to Die, Daniel Craig's swan song as James Bond. Number 10, Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills finally delivered on what I've wanted from these this new kind of rejuvenation of the Halloween franchise, the continued story from the original 1978 classic. Halloween 2018 to me was a disappointment because the more I watch that film, the less I like it. This is a movie that knows exactly what it is and it just absolutely kills. It's in the title. This is Michael unabashedly killing people for an hour and a half and I absolutely love it for that. Look, it, does a lot of the story beats make sense? No. Are the characters pretty dumb? Yes. But it follows the formula of what I love about slasher films, right? Which is you get a bunch of characters that are trying to go against this entity that's bigger than them and this entity just absolutely wrecks shop and kills everybody and there's no rhyme or reason michael myers is just the boogeyman he is evil incarnate and he will come and find you and i love that this movie did everything that i wanted in a halloween sequel number nine is licorice pizza this is the newest film from pta and this movie really felt a lot like Punch Trunk Love. Watching it, I really felt that there was kind of this callback to old classic kind of hangout films. This is a movie where you just enjoy the ride, you enjoy the characters. It's a film that has very, very subtle moments of both comedy and romance, but it's able to mix them so well. I actually found myself to really just be so invested heavily in this world that I didn't want to leave that when the, the movie actually came to a close, I felt in a way satisfied, but also dissatisfied because I just wanted to spend more time with these characters in this fictionalized world. And Bradley Cooper is so eye-catching on screen. He absolutely steals every single scene that he is in, but it's more than that. Alana Haim is incredible in this film and I can't wait to see what she does next. Number eight is going to be The Green Knight. This is a film that is really a fable. That's exactly what this movie is. It plays into the fable of what Arthur is of legend and basically this quest of him really kind of finding himself, this, this true identity for him. And it's amazing. It really dives deep into this game that him and the Green Knight are playing with one another. And I absolutely adore it. It's a movie that is visually breathtaking and beautiful. It feels so personal, but it also feels so inventive and so in a way free because although this movie is very personal and very intimate in, in moments, it's also very large in scope that deals with major, huge set pieces and set design that I just felt myself to be completely out of place in. I felt like I didn't deserve this film. And that I love about movies is when you actually find a film that you're like, do I even deserve to watch this? And that's how I felt throughout the entirety of The Green Knight. My number seven is Last Night in Soho, the new Edgar Wright film. I've seen a lot of divisiveness on this movie. I love this film. Thomas and Mackenzie, Anya Taylor-Joy, they both are incredible in this film. The movie unravels. And as time goes on, you're trying to figure out what's actually happening. And the conclusion of this movie really left me satisfied. I really liked the twists and turns along the way. Some of them worked a lot better than others because there are moments in this film where you're like, I saw where that was going and I was right. And then there are moments that completely shock you that you had no idea were about to happen. And when they actually unravel and untangle, you find yourself to really understand that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that it would go in this type of direction. 
And I also just really love Edgar Wright. I think he's one of the most inventive, one of the most fresh directors because he is willing to challenge himself with every single film that he makes. Every film is different in its own way, in terms of editing, in terms of style, in terms of tone, in terms of, in terms of substance, atmosphere. And he does it in such a way that you can still clearly tell that it is an Edgar Wright project, that this is his world, this is his mind, that we are able to be included in for even if it's just a short amount of time. Number six is actually going to go to a Netflix special. That is Bob Burnham's Inside. This to me is a piece of art. It's beautiful. It's more than a comedy special. I don't even look at it that way. This is a true piece of art that really dives into kind of almost in a way how everyone felt during 2020 and still ongoing actually with this pandemic. I actually had COVID and that's why this video is out so late. And, you know, I dove deep into this, you know, it's kind of that uncertainty of what's next, that failure that we all feel towards something that we're trying to achieve in life. You know, there's a lot of hidden meanings within all the songs that he has where it's really about depression. It's about guilt. It's about this, this feeling of like inadequacy of where you are in life and how you can kind of approach that next step. And that to me just shows how intimate and how personal Insight is, not only to us as a viewer, but also to Bill Burnham and with everything that he's experienced over the past decade. So I just absolutely love this piece of art. I listen to the, the soundtrack almost on an everyday basis. It's pretty gross how much I listen to the songs by the genius that is Bo Burnham and we're just all living in a Bo Burnham world. Number five is going to go to A Quiet Place Part Two. This movie is on par with the original film. I do think the original is better, but man, is this movie so good. This movie's tense. It really kind of prolongs the story of what A Quiet Place is. It also tells us kind of the, the impact of when these aliens first arrived to Earth and how everyone had to deal with this trauma and kind of this new world, this new apocalypse. And, but it, yet it still doesn't feel like it takes away anything from the first movie. There's still so much mystery about these alien creatures. There's still so much intrigue with the family drama and it picks up right where the first film ended and it does it in a way where it feels like their stories would make sense. It feels like they're still dealing with the trauma and the grief of losing their father from the first movie. And they have to kind of learn on their own. It's such a beautiful, beautiful sequel that I, I can't wait for part three. But also at the same time, I'm still very hesitant that part three can continue on this trajectory that the first two movies have put in place. Because, man... A Quiet Place Part 2 is easily just as good as the first movie. Number four, this, man, I love this film. It just tells you how good this top four is. But number four is going to be Dune. Dune is, to me, a film that I did not know much about going in, probably about two or three months out of when the film was coming, was going to release. And then I, I bought the book. I've been reading it and fell in love with this world, fell in love with Paul Atreides, fell in love with what is happening, kind of the science fiction of it, the, the political aspect of these different houses. And it really is that influence of what Star Wars had when George Lucas created Star Wars. It was the influence of Dune that helped it become what it is and what I love so much. And Dune is incredible. This is a movie that is epic in every sense of the word. I cannot wait for Dune Part 2. I'm so happy Denny Villeneuve is going to get his chance to make the entirety of the story that he wants to tell. I love Timothy Chalamet's portrayal of Paul because Paul is a character that really is still figuring out who he is as a person. And he's so young and he's so naive, but yet he's also so entrusting. And he has to take over the reins of what his father, Duke Leto, was, a man who was very revered and respected. And Timothy Chalamet, who I love, does such an amazing job. They couldn't have found anybody better, in my opinion, to play Paul Atreides. And also, Duncan Idaho is amazing. Like, I love Duncan Idaho and seeing him on screen. I wish he would have gotten the chance to have that drunk party moment in the movie, but it's okay. I love Duncan Idaho. They give him 
a death that is so glorious and like so like respectful where like all the deaths in the movie are better than in the book because sometimes characters die in the book and you're just like wait i have to read that again did they did they just die or did they not like they don't they don't really do a good job but in the movie they do a phenomenal job number three this film for the longest time was my number one but man i i and it's one of my favorite movies of all time now after watching it but it's malignant Malignant is my number three favorite film of 2021. I've gone in depth talking about this movie. I have a review if you want to check it out. It's going to be up above. Um, you guys should definitely watch that video. I go into full detail on why I love Malignant. But James Wan is back and I love when he does horror films like this. I know he is going to be doing Aquaman 2. I'm happy that he's kind of expanding and, and doing things that he loves to do and that he's passionate about whether that be horror, whether that be, you know, action, adventure, whether that be comic book films. But James, I really, I really want you to stay making horror films, man, because I, I love your creepy, messed up mind. And I want more in this world that you gave us because Malignant was one of those movies where I still scratch my head and say, how did this actually happen? My top two. Oh, here we go. Number two is going to be Spider-Man No Way Home. It did it. It did it. I had so many doubts about this movie going in. I didn't know what to expect other than the fact that I was hoping to see, and I'm going to spoil it. If you haven't seen it, I am sorry. Turn off or mute the video. But I was hoping to see Toby and Andrew back and boy did it deliver. It was everything I wanted it to be. I've seen it three times in theaters. I'm planning on seeing it a fourth time. I wanted to see it a fifth time, but because of COVID, I wasn't able to actually go. So I'm probably only gonna be, only gonna be able to watch it like four times in theaters. But let me tell you, this is a movie that is just amazing. It gives you everything you want as a Spider-Man fan. It blew me away. It blew me away, it still blows me away. I still think about how this all came to be. This actually happened. Our three Spider-Men were on screen together. But not only does it throw in the nostalgia, it actually gives a lot more to Tom Holland's Peter Parker. One of my biggest issues with Tom Holland's Peter Parker coming into No Way Home was the fact that he's always had to kind of be, you know, mentored by somebody, whether that be Iron Man, whether that be Happy. Like he's always had someone always watching him. And so there's never really been stakes. And in this movie, there are absolute stakes. He grows so much as a character. He can't rely on anybody except for himself and the people closest to him. This is a movie that really made me appreciate Tom Holland's Spider-Man even more. It also really gave us a great villain arc in Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. I actually was so surprised. I didn't think that they were going to be able to pull off a really good villain story and villain arc by putting in all of these villains from past Spider-Man films. But Willem Dafoe is incredible and he really deals with kind of that trauma of, I don't want to be who I am. And we know that from the original Spider-Man, but I would even say he's better in this. Like he actually is going through an identity crisis just like Tom Holland's Peter Parker now that everyone knows that he is Spider-Man. And it's incredible. I, I love that they blended nostalgia in with great storytelling. And this is a Spider-Man movie that easily, easily might be the best. I, I love Into the Spider-Verse. I still think maybe Into the Spider-Verse might be a tad bit better. I don't know. But No Way Home just gave me everything I wanted. And uh, can we get Tasm 3, please? That's all I can say. Because Andrew Garfield's performance was it was so good. It was so good. My number one favorite film of 2021, speaking of Andrew Garfield and performances, his best performance by far is in this film. And I'm not talking about The Social Network. I'm talking about Tick, Tick, Boom. This is my number one favorite movie of 2021. This movie has stuck with me ever since I watched it. I saw it in theaters. I was so happy I got to experience this movie for the first time in the theater. And that opening sequence, that opening number of 3090 is one of the most inspirational pieces of music and one of the most inspirational and, and most beautiful opening scenes of any film I've ever seen. 
I absolutely adore it. I actually go and watch it often. I watch it at least once or twice a week, just that opening scene, getting those goosebumps again, again, getting those chills, feeling, you know, how Jonathan Larson felt. This is a movie that's so inspirational and me being a filmmaker, me wanting to, to make my dreams come true, this is a movie that I look to as kind of a guide on how to really not get down on myself and just really understand that as long as I keep pushing, as long as I keep grinding, anything can happen. And Jonathan Larson was such a visionary and I have so much respect for what he did that th this movie just, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's gorgeous. It's my favorite movie of 2021. I, I can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop listening to the soundtrack. And I honestly, I, I love this movie. This movie's changed me. It actually has changed me. And not a lot of movies have done that ever in my life. And this is one that has. So anyway, that is my top 10 favorite films or best films of the year 2021. Let me know your thoughts on my list down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.